or what are three things about insurance that black people should know? Well, we need it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the coverage is good not only for yourself but your family. It's going to be a time in everybody's life that they need, that they're going to come and realize that they need it. So uh, it's important that, uh, you know, for me, is that uh, this brand, Atlanta Life Insurance, uh, is unique. Anytime a black man can go from slavery to becoming a, a black millionaire here in Atlanta, um, to become an entrepreneur. Um, it's, a, it's a story that should be told, and uh, I'm glad that we're able to take this uh, historical brand and company and revive, revitalize it and uh, really uh, bring it back to the people of Georgia. And uh, uh, it's unique that a black man can be able to buy a black man's company. And uh, so my team has done an excellent job. And so I'm excited about uh, Equitrust, my company, taking Atlanta Life Insurance, bringing it back to the marketplace. And uh, also, we're here to educate young people about money. And Ryan, who you will meet, did a fantastic job on Saturday. And he's right behind you, but you'll see him in a second. Um, T.I. came out and did an excellent job with the young people and explaining to them um, how he became an entrepreneur and explaining finances. And uh, that's what we want to do, too. It's not just about uh, selling policies and those things. It's about also how do we educate the black and brown community about finances and also owning your own company. And, and so uh, I want to give Ryan a lot of credit, thank TI for coming out, and uh, we will continue to do that here in Atlanta. And uh, every time the problem with our people is that we come late to the party a lot of time. We come late to the financial party. We're great at everything, but the last thing we got to dominate is money. And so we got to continue to look at that and how do we do that? Because um, fashion, sports, entertainment, I can keep going, you know. Uh, we're really good at it. But when it comes to understanding that we got to dominate money and, and do it young. Uh, I didn't come from money, but I had to learn it. <laughs> you know, so. Great question, thank you. Uh, Amir, yeah. right here to the right, he was in Q, then I got you next. How you doing, man? Just uh, A.R. Shaw from the Atlanta Daily World. Mm -hmm. Of course, Atlanta Life is a historic yes. uh, foundation in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. When were you first bringing to this uh, story, and what made you want to get involved? Well, I think that uh, Killer Mike was the one who really, he was doing an interview, and he's the one who really uh, brought to light about uh, this company and uh, the history of uh, Mr. Herndon. And so when I think about Killer Mike, uh, he was on, a, I, I, I don't know if it was a local station or it was an interview he was doing with other people. And uh, I had, we had to look that up. Man, we gotta look this guy up, look this company up. And so, uh, so big ups to Killer Mike for educating myself and I'm sure a lot of other people as well. And also big ups to him too because he's a great entrepreneur as well. So, right here. <coughs> Can you explain, oh, hi, I'm Erica Donnerstrand with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Can you explain what exactly the relationship between Equitrust and Atlanta Life is? Is Atlanta Life a subsidiary of Equitrust? Yeah, it's going to be in our portfolio. Okay, in your portfolio. And you are part of, you are the owner of Atlanta Life or part of the ownership group? You're looking at the owner. Okay, the majority so owner. That's me. You own it through Atlanta Life Holdings? There's a lot of companies we own, so just know that I own it. Own so we, we're not going to give you everything, but we gave you that. I just want to make sure it's accurate. No, no, you're right, you're right. I, I just told you. Okay. We're good. So we're going to roll it up, up under our portfolio. Okay. And so, so we're excited about that. But I, I won't steal all the thunder from my people. Let them explain it to you.
right here on the left. Yes. Hey, how you doing today, man? Uh, Terrell Thomas needs every time. It's wonderful to see all the things you do as far as wealth is concerned and wealth building in the African community, African community, African American community, excuse right. me. But of course, a Hall of Fame NBA star. Mm -hmm. um, Atlanta is on the up and coming as far as our Atlanta Hawks go. Of course, you played against the legend Dominique Wilkins. That's right. What are your thoughts on Trey Young? You being widely known as the best point guard to ever play the game. Uh, what are your thoughts on our point guard in our backyard? No, I love Trey. Trey. Uh, Man, you know, it seems like he's gotten better and better every year, stronger and stronger. Um, but also he's an entertainer, too, uh, the way he can uh, not only shoot the three, but also pass the basketball, too. I think he's grown as a leader, too. Um, you know, the Hawks just got to take one more step. You know, it's levels to it. And right now they make the playoff, but now it's time to really contend for a championship. So they got to figure out how to maybe add that one guy to make them a championship team because the backcourt is unbelievable. And so I think you can match them up against a lot of backcourts, but they just got to take that one more step. Uh, because again, this year they'll make the playoff again. But when you seven, eight seed in the NBA, uh, that's a tough mountain to climb when you got to beat Milwaukee or, or Philly or the Celtics, and they're going to always give them a run, but they're going to end up coming up short, right? And so they just got to figure out. Uh, my friend Tony Wrestler brought the team, so I know him. He's a neighbor of mine, and so my kids went to school with his kids, the whole thing. So, so I wish him well. But the NBA this year, whoo, man, with all these trades, <laughs> it's going to be something. So it's exciting to watch. and. Uh, so good luck to him because Trey, I, I love watching him, and I'm a fan. And so, uh, so good luck. Thank you. We got time for two more. All right, Chris Daniel. How you doing, man? All right, Christopher Daniel, UT.com, and professor at Morehouse College. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on starting your scholarship fund at your alma mater. Thank you. Name of your father. Thank As you were looking at. Alonzo Hearn's legacy and mm -hmm. looking at your portfolio, what parts of your life and your business acumen mirror is? Yeah, I think well, his, his concern and the growth of the black community, right? And so when he got the barber shops, right? And you think about, um, so now he's putting young other entrepreneurs to work and giving them opportunity, right? Then you think about the real estate holding. Well, I used to be in real estate. Matter of fact, if you think about all the mixed uses that I built here in Atlanta, the one at Georgia Tech that has that public housing on top, the public supermarket on the bottom, that's my, it, it, oh man, I can keep going. There's so many things that I built here that people don't even know about. You know, I used to own the Burger Kings here, on and on and on. I used to own a lot of things here in Atlanta. Uh, and so, um, that's how we mirror, right? Because real estate is so important to control and operate. Uh, and so, and there's not going to be a lot more land. So you want to try to, if you can seize it and control it, um, man, you can really have a big opportunity. So for him to do that way back then when a black man wasn't supposed to be doing those things, right? Actually, you can almost say he paved the way for a guy like myself. So, um, you know, it's important that we shine light on his legacy, continue that legacy. The young lady was like, do you own it? Yes, I do. So that means another black man is owning it. So, you know, that's important. And so uh, this is really going to be great for Ryan, who we put, um, and you're going to see him in two seconds. He's heading it up, and he has a big job, you know. And, but we're, we're 20, what is it, 25 billion? 26. $26 billion company. So we know what we're doing. And, uh, and that's without Atlanta Life. So you can imagine once we get Atlanta Life, and that, that we have it now, uh, we'll be able to build it and grow it. And we've uh, turned that uh, over to Ryan. He's got a great team that he's put together uh, incredible African-Americans who are in this space. And so uh, uh, I'm just excited, man. And so I would say that that's our visions aligned, the brands aligned. Um, 
and to also help the young people. So those were, I think, six, sixth graders through, well, the, yeah, six to eighth graders that we had at the Herndon House, which is a museum now. And uh, that was really great. We had like a shark tank they were presenting to us. Uh, but Ryan will be able to tell you more. And so that was really great. Everything that we were able to do with those over 100 kids there, uh, that's how we are also uh, aligned as well. So um, I'm gonna continue to do my part. God has uh, put a purpose on my heart that I'm supposed to give back, touch others, go back into my community. Thank you for what you said about my father. Uh, he was big into education, but also a big Michigan State guy. So that's why we created that. So we sent 11 African Americans to Michigan State, but also to we sent over 10,000 um, minority students to college so far. You know, back in the day, we used to work with all the historical black colleges, through the, and uh, so now we do it through different uh, colleges, including historical black colleges. All right. Last question right here to the right side of the LAX. Huh? Yeah, to our side on Instagram. What's that? The LAX deal that you got. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we, uh, well, you know, JLC, we're one of the biggest infrastructure companies. And so we're building a cargo space there. And we did JFK, we did LaGuardia Airport. One was a $4 billion deal. JFK is a $10 billion deal. And that cargo space at LAX is a $4 billion deal. So. You know, just trying to do things that walk through doors that minorities, especially a black man, has probably never walked through, but also open those doors for others to come and follow. And that's what it's all about. And we'll continue to do that. And you said somebody else. Yeah. Um, right I don't know who it was. Right here. Oh, okay. All right. I'm new to the insurance game. I see that you're doing so much with the community mm -hmm. and giving back. What ways will your insurance company help the community and what would make me switch the insurance that I have to your insurance? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, we're good at what we do and we're going to be here for the community. And I think that uh, I'll let Ryan, I don't want to steal his thunder because he's the one who you, you should be asking this question to. But um, we have thousands of people who has uh, policies with us. So we must be doing a good job and we will continue to do that. And uh, when you sign with us, we shake your hand. Everything we tell you we're gonna do, we're gonna do it. And I said, that's the difference. And we're gonna be there for people. And then we're gonna reinvest in our community too. And how many people can say that, you see? And that's the key as well. And then educating our kids about finances. How many uh, insurance companies are gonna go back into the hood and help our people to grow and get better. And so uh, we do a fantastic job, but uh, you have to remember, we were all once in the hood, okay? So then I go back to make a difference. I didn't grow up with money, I didn't grow up successful, so I had to work my butt off to get to this place. But I, don't, I haven't forgotten where I come from. And so um, that's why we did that event Saturday. It was very important that we, we, we haven't even rolled the company out, but we did an event already to enhance over 100 kids mm -hmm. who needed that education, right, about finances. So that should tell you all you need to know about us, right? We haven't come out and said, hey, sign up with us. Mm -mm. We said, hey, we're going to affect change right now. And so uh, Atlanta knows Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing business here in Atlanta for a long time. And so I will continue. It's been a great market for me, great community. Um, and so this was, uh, this was different. Uh, it hit home that I could, you know, acquire another black man's business that went through what he went through to become successful. Man, it touched my heart in a different way than anything else that we have done. And uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. And so God bless everybody. Thank you for coming out. 
Uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys. We're, we're excited about this. Uh, I want to bring Ryan because Ryan is the one who will be here. He moved to Atlanta. One of the smartest young men that uh, uh, had the pleasure to grab him when he was in college. He went uh, to uh, Wall Street, then he went to uh, get his uh, Stanford MBA, and, and he actually did our Sparks deal for us uh, in the WNBA. Uh, we said, okay, let's see what he got. And so, and this is when he was in college. And he did a fantastic job of negotiating that deal. We said, Ryan, we're going to leave this history and this unique and special brand and put it in your hands. And so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to let Ryan, without stealing his thunder, let's get a picture. We follow you on? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes.